Good morning, pregame crew. Audio visual check, please. Hey Judd, hey Lisa, Meta, Jorge, Hasib, EUK Nibbler. Welcome, Davy Baby Greg, Tony Money, Bobby Orr, and P Court. Welcome, welcome. Hey Bobo. Awesome. Thanks, Bobby. I appreciate it. If you are interested in my chart setup, you can screenshot this. I use tradingview.com. You can see it right up here. Literally, it's my most asked question. What do I use for charting? Tradingview.com. I set up these charts uh, to my liking. I use the yellow and purple simple 50 and 200 moving, moving average, the exponential moving averages that I use, 8 and 21. The yellow candles are just inside bars. I like for them to pop out at me. I use the CM Ultimate RSI multi time frame. You can plot multiple time frames, multiple RSI on this panel. Red is overbought, green is oversold, and then I use the TTM squeeze, think or swim default. I'm an options trader. I like to see when there is pressure building and some type of setup, a price move to the upside or to the downside. Ross Turek. It is called JC Inside Bars, JC underscore Inside Bars on TradingView. Hey, Chris. Hey, Widow Puppy. We'll get started in just a couple minutes. My screen is busier than normal. I just wanted to show you a couple things. I don't use them every day, but sometimes I just like to know where they are. I gotta wake up, it's FOMC day. This is the day to be on your toes. Hi, Callum from Scotland. Hi, Ross and Steven. The pivot levels, so over here is called pivot high low, and I have mine set to three and three. So on inputs here, length high, length low, I think it defaults to five, five. I want to grab more pivot levels. So good question. Thank you for your question, Stephen. I do it on three and three so I can grab more levels. It doesn't always map the levels. You can see here, this resistance, we don't have a pivot label above. So you always have to still triple check the work because it's not going to grab all of them, but it does help just kind of get a quick visual. Someone showed us this in crypto four years ago. And man, it made my life simpler. You know what else made my life simpler? We used to do Sunday, I started BYOC, bring your own chart, and we would do chart review on Sunday. And people would see me maneuver around trading view and they would give me tips. So this is one of my favorite tips, time frames. So one minute, two minute, five minutes. So you see these stars? So once you highlight it as a favorite and mark it, then it's gonna show up on your toolbar so you can jump around and not have to constantly drag and drop and choose your time frame. I thought that was a real handy dandy thing that I learned. I'm always learning from y'all just as much as you're learning from me. So I'm taking the chart setup off the screen. Hey Matthew, Lieutenant Dan, hi. Uh, Captain Tony, Michelle, James, welcome, welcome. We have a giveaway coming up on Friday. I can't wait. Uh, I think the email went out yesterday, just kind of giving you a heads up. We're gonna give out a free annual membership to the Chart Guys community, and we're gonna give away some classes. So you have to be present to win. Ugh, never thought I'd be that cheesy, but I'm that girl. So we will have a little trivia, and whoever answers the question correctly first will win. Hi, Tammy and Matthew. So, we it's time. It's time to get started. I'm Chart Gal Lori. I am part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. We have a, a community that's based in Slack, where we are not slackers, and we discuss commodities, crypto, crypto alts, marijuana, um, Canadian tickers. We kind of go over it all, futures. Uh, whatever your interest is, you could probably find a channel. We even have a channel named Reddit Stocks where we post setups, data. We're constantly sharing, and I usually get my best setups 
from my morning research. I get about half from my morning research and the other half from community posts by other members. So the format of the pregame show is I go over the Fab Four Futures. That is ES, that's SPY Futures, NASDAQ Futures, Dow Futures, and Russell Futures. Then I go over commodities, gold, and oil. I give a little touch of crypto, and then I go over my setups for the day, technical setups, things to be watching. We have a very scant list this morning of potential setups. We have FOMC today at 2 p.m. Eastern, and I will go over what to expect with FOMC. I promise this is a day where you can lose more money than you think is possible. And this can also be a home run kind of day. I have never, never gone through an FOMC, and at the end of the day, I've I've never gotten through an FOMC without thinking, man, if I would have just waited for that home run setup, and each time I get better, and I get better, and my patience gets better, that first move is usually not what you're going to make money on. It's later on throughout the day, we have those remaining what was that two hours in the day and you get a better setup later in the day versus that initial reaction so and also i might as well go over it right now the reaction typically uh, i'm gonna hide this for now here are your key resistances and support so let's move over to the black area here so what typically happens is we have fomc so we have the day and as the day lingers on we get real boring, we get sideways, while everyone just sitting back, finger on the trigger, waiting for FOMC. Then when FOMC happens, now I'm just gonna pretend like this is the reaction. We go up hard, let's say we go up hard, and then we come straight into a resistance, or right over a resistance, and then we come back and we reverse, and we come down hard. It happens a lot, and then we reverse, and then we get our real reaction. So if the Fed start talking about tapering, start talking about talking about tapering, backing off of their efforts to prop up the economy, if they start talking about inflation fears or talking about talking about interest rate hikes, then we could have some serious moves to the upside or the downside. Also, uh, Vladimir Putin and Biden are talking right now. If there were a security incident with that type of meeting, that could impact the market way more than FOMC. So always stay on your toes. Yes, it's a FOMC day, so we are on our toes. But remember, any day, anything can happen on any given day. We've gone through the tax nightmare where Biden had a discussion or some one of his people talked about potential uh, tax rate hikes, capital gain rate hikes and the market went, the bottom fell out. So you never know what's gonna happen, stay agile. Typically the first reaction is not the real reaction and sometimes even the reverse, when they reverse it and let's say pull it down or vice versa, it's not the real reaction. And then we have this large EQ that sets up the rest of the day. So we have this big move, we have this big range, and then we have a large EQ set up. It happens pretty often. So in my opinion, this is a pretty pivotal day for Jerome Powell. He needs whatever he does today could be pivotal for his career. Hopefully he keeps things very muted and on the lowdown and we don't have any crazy reactions. But what I have found out found is if I have a swing position that I'm not willing to close. But if I want to get some gratuitous you know, uh, market closes, I will put a crazy order out there. So let's say I have an Amazon call uh, spread, debit spread. I think Amazon's going up over the next two months. I may put in a really high order. Let's say it's $3 for the call debit spread right now is current price. I may put in an order of $10. These option premiums rise really, really high. And sometimes you can get some good closes where you get some good sales in there and then you can re-add it back when option premium is lower so and it is infamous for taking out stops and then resuming higher so just watch all your orders this is a day not to be overactive this isn't the day to make money this is the day to get wrecked r-e-k-t wrecked so please be careful okay so earlier i had the visible range so the way that i got this is over here volume profile, visible range. And this is where, the, this is the market order profile. I hardly ever keep this on my chart, but I like to have it on my chart to see where is the magnet. And right now the magnet on the hourly is at 30, is at 42.37, it's 42.36.50. This is the VPOC, this is the volume 
point of control. This is where the most volume has gone off at this level for the hourly chart, 42.37. And that and how funny is it that we're at that level right now? Actually, it's not very funny. It's pretty accurate. It happens a lot. So when we're building the structure of a chart, we like for things to be even over here. So what you'll see is price will go up and backfill and build the structure here. Price will go down and start building this price structure here and try to even it out. Right now, 42.36.50 is the magnet for price for the volume profile. How do I use this information? Well, I hide it. And then I like to know these levels and then I'm just gonna put um, okay that's close enough where I put a yellow line on my chart horizontal line and I say okay that's where the VPOC is so if price comes down to it from above I know that could act as support if it runs into it from below it could act as resistance it's just a really nice piece of information to add to your chart especially on a very busy day all right let's go look at the resistances and you're going to want to have a lot of levels on your chart normally I keep it tight to the uh, more nearby resistances and support but I want all the levels on my chart so this is how I would go into FOMC so if we run up into 4260 and then we price starts reversing then I know that may be a level to short I'm also watching my market internals so I watch tick and I'm just gonna write this out right here so tick plus six plus or minus okay can't type plus or minus 600 I am watching those market internals. This is probably the most important one for me. If we have market internals and we are sustaining a tick level, tick cumulative, that's where they're buying more on the uptick than they're selling on the downtick if it's positive and vice versa if it's negative, then I know this is a believable move. So I'm looking for sustained ticks over 600 on Thinkorswim. Uh, it is, the chart is dollar sign. That's a terrible dollar sign. Thank God I don't get paid to write, right? So dollar sign tick, uh, it's available in trading view as well. I never use it. So tick here, I keep it on the five minute. And then I'm looking, so you see how yesterday was a muted day. You see how we're right within that 600 range. We got one tick below and one tick above. And that just shows me what price action did yesterday sideways. All right, let's look at the four. Let's see who's stronger. Right now, NASDAQ has a little bit better bounce going than ES, then YM, and then RTY. RTY is the weakest. So we went over the ES levels. Let's look at the NASDAQ levels. 140, I'm gonna round up. 14050 is that key resistance, and 14018 is that key support. We may stay within this range. Odds favor we stay within this range all day until we get to FOMC. Then we could break out to the upside or to the downside. YM, 24, let's call it, excuse me, 34, 185, 34, 095. I would say those are the key levels. We may stay within those levels the rest of the day. Highly probable. All right, then we have RTY. RTY is not looking as healthy. RTY. 2350 is the level. 2350 is the resistance level. Support 20, 2300 and then 2270. Those are our key resistances and our key support on RTY. Gold. Gold can be the most volatile out of everything else because the dollar gets impacted. So when the dollar goes, goes up, typically gold is inverse. Not always, but sometimes. So gold can have some really volatile days. If you are in Nugget or JNUG, these GDX, GDXJ, these gold miners, if you are in them bull or bear today, be careful. You have to be a serious pro pro, like serious professional in order to trade that on a date like today. Key resistance, 1906. Key support, 1845. So 
if we stay within this range, that'd be great. Just keep tightening and keep tightening and give us a better trade. If you're a day trader, you just want tightening ranges. It is hard for me to do anything within this large range. So hopefully we stay tight and you break out to the upside or downside, but the tighter it goes, the better the trade. Oil, super bullish, four hour, um, what's today? Yeah, Wednesday, four hour bull flag. And we have inventory this morning at 1030 Eastern, which could impact price. Oil just looks very, very bullish. It has just been a straight up bull monster. So I wouldn't step in front of the train yet, but I will be watching for a short on gold, on oil. When it goes up this fast and this strong, when it comes back, you're typically going to get a really nice pullback. So I'm waiting, but I'm not going to step in front of this bulldozer right now. Crypto. So Bitcoin went and broke that key support we talked about yesterday, 41.076. Then it, it broke at 4132255 and then it pulled down. Key support approaching 38928, then 38744. Bitcoin is just not looking good. It could be a daily bull flag, but this is not how you want to see a daily bull flag with such a tiny pull. As a matter of fact, I can't call it a bull flag. It goes against my religion when it's that weak. So support 38928, 3874. Be careful, Bitcoin and crypto bulls all in all. So we have support. We're losing the support on Ethereum. It's weaker than Bitcoin. Your next support is down at 233072, 230967, resistance 2555, 256657. If you don't have a position, I'd wait for a pop on the hourly into a downtrending EMA and enter short. I only see short. Uh, for me, in my opinion, this is only short setups right now on crypto Apple. Apple could be a bull flag. It's actually a 12 hour, I believe it was clear. It could be a bull flag on the 12 hour. Um, Apple, I love to the long side. I like when we get these little bear breaks without a lot of follow through. So Apple could be a nice long. I just like this chart. On the weekly, we have this turn up in price on the daily. We are squeezing and we've popped up over the 50 MA. It's very common pop up over a key EMA, then come back test it. So if we touch that EMA around 128.94, that could be a great buying opportunity for Apple. I only like Apple to the long side. It's just a difficult day for me to take that trade because we don't know what's going to happen with FOMC. ARVL, ARVL, I'm going to have to clear these levels because they've already gone through it. Lots of volume. It has surpassed AMC the last time I looked in pre market volume 2190, 2104 are your supports. You could trade this with a possible pullback to $21 as a potential long, but on any bounce, you would still be looking for a lower high compared to 2537 and 2544. If you can't tell, these Reddit names are very difficult to trade right now. Uh, Vizio is probably the worst chart I've seen in a while. I can't imagine how many people got hurt yesterday. It breaks my mama heart. Look at this chart. So we came up, we tested 2762. We came within a dollar of all time high and boy, did we pull back. Look at that. Now, how do you trade this? I mean, it's just very difficult. We went, we just zoomed higher and then we went, came back and broke the low of day. So just be careful. It's a roller coaster. Put your seatbelt on, i.e. the stop loss uh, for a potential trade. IDEX. I like this risk to reward on IDEX. We are looking for a weekly high or low. And bulls are close to losing the daily. So on the weekly, we have until 224 for a weekly high or low. So plenty of room. On the daily, 284 is that key level. And now we have a little double bottom at 288. So 288, a pullback to 288 could be an area to enter. And it's a lot for a small price name to give it four cents, but you could give it four cents down to 284 for potential long. So I like risk to reward setup on this name, long risk to reward, where I am at a lower risk because I'm so close to my support. So if 288 is lost, you could stop out and then wait for it to approach 284 and re-enter and give it a penny or two of wiggle room. If you're in the US, it's free. It's, I mean, you have no commission. If you're Canadian, that's a whole nother issue. But you know, you're, you can just re-enter. It's okay to stop out and wait for a position to set up. So I like IDEX to the long side. 
I would say this is my prince of the mountain, not a king of the mountain today. Long setup with nice risk reward. And on IDEX, it's not going to follow the market as closely. It can be a money badger and do its own thing. So I like choosing names like this separate and apart from uh, the indexes with FOMC today. Uh, okay, I'm going to try, okay, AMC and Tilray, I'll try to get to those. Okay, Oracle. Oracle had earnings really odd, just really, really odd. They had, a, I think, a mild beat, and then they're just getting hammered. They're down 5%. And then we got a crazy number of price raises today, upgrades, price target increases. So on Oracle, we're already breaking that low. Let me clear that out, and let's get some new levels so we broke 7750 I still like to put it on my chart because if it comes back up and over it could be a resistance on a pop up so I like Oracle to the long side it's beat down pretty good it had a nice run into earnings and this is something that's really good to add to your toolbox if you are looking at an earnings trade this thing was priced to perfection that is a term you will see often in a name that's ran hard look how hard it ran let's look at it what's the from here it's up 40 percent on the year it would have to murder just absolutely crush earnings in order to keep going up but we do have a potential weekly bull flag i don't like this volume here we don't like this here and of course we're just starting our week here and we do have an upper wick of profit taking but we still have a trend trade so i like oracle to the long side uh, you would have to be very careful be protective because it can keep going further down farther down than we can remain solvent but i like oracle to the long side crushed earnings it was priced to perfection and now they're being punished but i'd like a potential bounce up Resistance 7718, 78, and 7849. Stay back on these names. Make it prove it to you. Riot. Crypto is so, so bearish right now. Not so, so. Maybe one so. So I like a top fish setup, 3594, 3667. So any little bounce up that we get could be an opportunity to short. Look at these EMA, slope of the EMA, so Tima. Look how it's pointed down. Uh, this could really get some get moving 3187 would be your next level to the downside so I like riot to the short side I would say that's probably the king of the mountain today is riot to the short side SoFi SOFI it got a price target raised to $30 today uh, this is a very erratic name bottom fishing that daily EQ it got coverage initiated at $30. So on SoFi, what I'm looking at is we have this EQ. When they're this cute, I like to do this path. So now it's trying to find support at the daily 21 EMA. So I like a bottom fish of this $20 as a potential swing, actually. So it could be a day trade or a swing, and it can do its own thing. It's not heavily weighted in the market. So I like SoFi and a bottom fish. So $20 is the level in the daily EQ. You could use this 20, I would say 2065 as a bottom fish level for SoFi. SPY, SPY is getting real tight. Here's your levels. 42599 is the level. If we were to really get, get jiggy with it, the next target would be 42793. We are in a daily uptrend on SPY. Bears have to prove it. They are in the hot seat, not the bulls. Bears have to prove it. Okay, QQQ, here are your levels, and I'm going to get to Widow Putty, Puppy and... Okay, so let's go real fast. Okay, so that's your levels on QQQ. On any bounce, look how QQQ is. On any bounce, we're looking for lower highs. So I am looking bearish on QQQ as a potential morning trade. Then I'll back off that idea as FOMC approaches. AMC. AMC still has a 10 out of 10 score on the short squeeze. Potential as far as has a huge amount of shorts. Why? Because this is a highly overvalued. I mean, they, they're they doing offerings. I mean, this is not a great company right now to be going through the roof, but we have the Reddit hype behind it. We got big shorts on it. So here are your levels. 
Uh, I like a bottom fish on this closer to 5706, 5673. Okay, TCG members, Dan will get started in 10 minutes. Just trying to remind y'all heads up. Tilray. Tilray. We could possibly bottom fish this. This thing just getting side swiped. If we could come down and touch the 50 MA at 1730, I would like it for a potential long, just a day trade. Just a day trade. So your levels on this are 1768. And then the next level, I'm making a level for me is 1730, the 50 MA. So on any bounce, you are fighting a crap ton of bears on this chart so just be careful i like it for a flip you flush down to 1730 give me give me give me tilray long s-e-n-s sins okay what's going on with sins all right so odds favor a weekly lower high on this chart we we pulled down we pulled down so hard and now we got a nice v-shaped bounce but odds favor a lower high of relative to 556 so we got a nice little bottom fish level of 350, nice risk reward. So if you hit 348, let's say you stop out, I'd give it two pennies below this for a bottom fish. If you'll notice, I'm always looking for the best risk reward trade, not the most, I'm looking for a logical trade, but I'm also looking for the best risk reward. And if you went short over here, you crush this trade. If you went short at 384, perfect trade. But I'd be looking to cover around 350 and go to the long side. Thank you for the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Okay, shop MRNA and clove. Okay. I normally don't have this much time, but let's see. Clove. Weekly inside bar, of course, with last week's crazy move. 1360 is the level, and then 1343. We got to hold 1360, and the absolute must hold 1343. If not, you're looking at a gap fill down here of $12. I like clove to the long side, bottom fishing that key 1360. Your next level below that, 1350, and then what level did I say? 1343, 1343. So I like clove to the long side for a counter trend flip. Your resistance is up at 1393, 1397 shop. And then this will be my last one. Shop, this is my favorite type pattern when we have this rounded bottom increasing bull volume it was green on a very red on a red day yesterday so i like shop to the long side your key levels are after 1350 i trade this one a lot so i know it's 1360. all right you're welcome okay crypto space one more fsr FSR on the daily. We have lost the daily uptrend. We are looking for a weekly higher low. We have a weekly inside bar. Odds favor we stay within this range this week. Big range. High 1939. Low 1582. Your levels are? Stay safe out there. I mean it. I will come find you and I will give you... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do to punish you if you don't use stop losses. Please, please, please use stop losses. You're welcome. Thanks, Mustang, Mahid, Callum, Rob, Virtual. I really appreciate y'all joining me. It means a lot to me. I like hanging out with y'all in the morning. And stay safe out there.